Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Javi Lee and today I'm going to be doing a walk around of my DIY custom homemade overland slash camping trailer. So I built this in a month or two. Um, it's completely DIY. Uh, pretty much the only thing that was not were the rims and the tent. But let me let me do a walk around and we'll I'll show you what we got going on. So we'll start on the boring side first because there's a lot less going on. So right off the bat we do have a mini built rooftop tent. This is the Gen 1. I got this used off of Facebook um, and it's in decent shape. The guy had it on his truck and left it on his truck and never used it but it did get some sun damage but I don't really care. It was a good deal so I bought it and I'm about to spend my third or fourth night in it. But anyway let's start on the trailer. Let's start over here. So, first off, we have our air vent uh, because you need to let your trailer breathe. I didn't realize that on my first trailer and it grew mold. Uh, right here is a water intake and air vent for the water tank inside. We have 10 gallons on board, but this is just a simple thing. Pops off, easy peasy. This is mainly for dish water or washing hands. We have some knockoff Max tracks. These are, oh, I believe, I can't even tell you what they're called. They're on, from Amazon or eBay. I got them when they were like 80 bucks a piece, but now I think they're around 100 to 110. But I've never used them on my truck because I've never gotten stuck in my truck. That Tacoma is basically a cheat code and it does not get stuck. Under, under those, we do have just some fenders. Those were bought from Northern Tool because I was not confident enough in building fenders. So for rims and tires, these are, let me get this out of the way, 225-70 R15 uh, street tires because here in Florida, we don't do any rock crawling or mudding, really. I mean, I wouldn't mud with a trailer. That seems kind of stupid if I'm doing that. Uh, and you don't really need aggressive off-roading tires. Most of the time you're on flat roads because that's all we have here uh, and paved. So I just have street tires because I had them. They were free. So I figured if I pop one, that's when I'll move on. But those are some on some 15-inch Jeep wheels I got off Facebook. You can always find people getting rid of Jeep wheels for cheap. And that's why I picked it up. Next, we have my one of my favorite things about this trailer is these brake lights slash turn signals because they're sequential. So I'll put up a clip right now of what it looks like when they're on, but I love it so much. It just looks so good. Um, it's one of my favorite things about this trailer. Right next to it, we do have a rock light, and then all the wiring is ran through PVC. That way it's all protected. Uh, it's a wood floor, a wood bottom just because steel is extremely expensive and wood was not nearly as expensive. So down here for suspension, we actually do have suspension on here. So I have some Monroe shocks uh, to absorb impact along with some custom leaf springs. Uh, I think these were from a company called Stingle Bros, I think, but they're about seven or 800 pound leaf springs on each side. I don't know how much the trailer legitimately weighs, I know the springs do, or the sh the springs and the shocks do perfect for it, uh, and it was pr relatively cheap. I think the sh the springs were thirty bucks a piece, maybe thirty. No, they were thirty bucks a piece. Along with the shocks, were about thirty bucks a piece. The axle is from Northern Tool as well. I cut it in the middle, rewelded it um, to the right width I needed, and that's pretty much it underneath. On the back. We do have a large swing out door. Now this, I'm, I'm pretty content with this. I'm not super happy with it, but I'm pretty content. It's just kind of a catch all for all our camping stuff. And the idea was that you leave everything in the trailer. So when you're ready to go camping, you just hook up and you're good to go. And that, that's pretty much what I did today. I hooked up and left. I basically threw in some clothes in the truck and some food and that was it. But let me show you what we got in here. So we have some RGB LED strips for lighting in here because this is actually the cheapest way to light an area. 
If you look at LED lights, everything is so expensive except for strip lights. I think this was 16 feet and it cost me like $8 for RGB, which I mean, who cares if it's RGB, right? Like it doesn't matter. But it was extremely cheap and it worked perfect because it's 12 volt already. The floor is actually this like stick -em tile from Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, I wanted to protect the wood and make it replaceable so that if something gashed it or gouged it, you can take the piece off and replace it and it's no big deal. And it's worked out really well. I don't have to worry about the wood being harmed uh, because obviously that's the bottom, so that's the seal. And then the sides, as you can see, this is aluminum, um, aluminum skin. This is basically what it is right here. It's not very thick. I don't know what gauge this is, maybe 24, 26. But I designed it this way so that the inside was completely sealed off. Like if you look, it's one continuous piece over here. Over here I had to do a seam or two, but that's another air vent, one in the front, one in the rear. That way, you know, the trailer breathes. But this is just a big door. This area here is about four feet, maybe four and a half by, oh, I want to say four feet. This was designed just as a place to store totes and other equipment and just keep it out of the bed of the truck. That's really pretty much it. Let's move along. Over here, we do have a spare tire. This is actually, well, let me, I guess let me explain why I made it this way. So usually, trailers have your beams on the inside and your supports uh, on the inside and the skin on the outside of that kind of like what we have up top um, so the reason we have it up top like that is for uh, sealing it because if you did this same method here up top water would sit in it and pool and we didn't want that so on the outside on the sides and the rear and the front I did it like this because I wanted to be able to add things to it extremely easily so with that being said, I added this roof rack, roof rack, and this is just welded on right to the outside. I didn't have to work through aluminum because you can't weld steel to aluminum, it just doesn't work. And then just like this door here, welded right on to the outside, front, top and bottom. This spare tire mount is actually, I don't know if you can see it, you cannot really see it. It's actually riv nutted into the beams and it's it's stout. We've been off-roading quite a while and it's still here. And also I forgot to mention the shovel entirely. The shovel is the same thing. It's quick fisted in here with some riv nuts um, just because it works so well along with the Max tracks, traction boards, knockoffs, whatever you want to call them. It's the same thing. Uh, just a rib nut in there, and the opportunities are endless once you get there. Uh, the rooftop tent, I'm not really going to show inside because it's just a mattress. I'm pretty sure you've probably seen a rooftop tent like this before. It's nothing special, so I'm not going to spend much time on it, and I'm not too experienced with it. I've only spent you know about three days, four days sleeping in it. But let me show you my kitchen. So this was a project my wonderful father helped me out with because this was kind of a lot. So let's turn those cabin lights off. So right off the bat, we do have a control panel with our main cabin lights, our spreader lights, which I think that's the, yeah, those are our rock lights under here. I kind of used the labels they gave me and it was for a boat, so I really tried. Uh, forward cabin lights, that's just the light for in here, it's another light strip. And water pressure, because we have a 12 volt pump in here. So let me slide this out. And check this out guys, we have a propane grill mounted, that way it stays. All this is pretty sturdy, this is about a 500 pound drawer slide, so it is not going anywhere. We have a collapsible sink with faucet, just like this. And this is collapsible because I have a 10 gallon water tank in here. Let me show you this. And then there's the 12 volt pump. So all that goes underneath here. So this is, as 
you can kind of see how it's designed now. So this area, this area here fits in and that collapses up and goes over the water tank. So that's why it had to be done like that. And then the wiring, because I just don't know of a good way to do it. But this is our little kitchen cooking cabinet area. Uh, I really like this just because it's very convenient. It's kind of a catch-all, but it has a back on it, so things can't fall out the back, and the front's got a little lip, so things don't really fall out the front. So I leave stuff in here. Uh, and then, then I have a little LED strip in here just to light it up at night. Honestly, you don't really need it if you're using a headlamp, but it's just nice to have. Then our sink and faucet, of course. I bought, <laughs> I bought a collapsible faucet because this right here, and I didn't think through it. And it's actually short enough that you can just leave it open, just like that. And then all of this, all the lights and faucet and water pump are all powered by a 27 DC battery from Walmart. Oh, heck yeah. So I'm not gonna get into the wiring too much just because it's kind of a lot. It's simple, but it's a lot. Uh, but basically we have, let's see if I can get it. That's a module to convert our brake lights to our turn signals in the back because they're special, a nice fuse block. Uh, this is just right here. This is a battery ch charger, which we plug it in right here. And then this is our plug for our hose. So this, you can plug a hose in here and you can use this to uh, put out fire, wash off, anything. I just wanted to make this incredibly useful and functional. And then we actually have the wiring goes from in here into the main cab. Let's see if you can see it. Uh sort of it goes into the main cab and it's completely waterproof this is completely sealed water resistant i'm not gonna say waterproof because it probably would if you drown it it will probably water will get through but it's water resistant and i built this for off-roading along with oh i forgot to collapse the sink all right i'll show you so if you come around the back here and you look at the ground clearance it's a lot like you have the axle of course which you can't do anything about the axle unless you get timber and axles which those are very expensive and this was a budget build but the ground clearance alone this you know here to the ground i think it's like oh i don't know like 18 inches something like that if you actually look at it compared to the truck it's about even with the truck like the bottom of the bumper, it's about even. It's pretty ideal, honestly. Um, this trailer goes wherever I tell it. It follows me anywhere my truck goes, the trailer follows without an issue. And it's just been really, really great. I don't, I think that's pretty much it. So that's pretty much it. This is my trailer. Uh, I built it myself entirely, well, with my dad's help on some things, but I, it was built, not bought. Um, everything was homemade, handmade, uh, you know, except obviously rims, tires, a propane grill, you know, stuff like that. But overall, it was a lot of fun. I think it worked well. It does work well for what I ask of it. Uh, any improvements I'd make, I probably would just put some drawer system in the back. I'd probably just do something back here to organize this a bit. It's kind of a mess uh, when you throw everything in here. So maybe like two big drawers that come out to help, you know, take some of the stuff away. Cause it's like bathroom, kitchen stuff, a hose, uh, just the big tote is for firewood. We keep this full of firewood and you know, you don't have splinters of firewood going everywhere or possible bugs or termites or whatever you may find in the bugs and the, in the wood. So overall, I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you want to buy it, you can message me. I'll sell it to you. Depending on where you are, I might deliver it because it gives me a reason to get out of the house. So I'd like to thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.